Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Friday Night Smackdown off the back of a fiery elimination chamber. We are starting it out with the current world heavyweight champion, L.A. Knight. After he retained against Seth Rollins at elimination chamber, figured out his own identity, I guess. But now L.A. Knight has to speak his mind following the win. Yeah. Let me talk to you. Well, how about we talk a little bit? First off, I think I've gotten rid of that holier-than-thou hillbilly and his dick riders, one literally. Anyway, now that my character has been called into question, my identity has been figured out, I think it's time we focus on what is the real talking point, and that's this World Heavyweight Championship. Everybody's been caught up in the Q&A on my life that they're forgetting the list of names I've beaten in this reign. It's a who's who of huge stars. Seth Rollins being the most recent. CM Punk at WrestleMania. John Cena at the Royal Rumble. Gunther and Roman Reigns on this very show. I mean, who else do I gotta beat for the locker room to respect me as a champion? Ever since I cashed in money in the bank, everyone called it a fluke. Nobody could beat Gunther, so I had to do it the easy way. If I took the easy way, I wouldn't have my first world title at 41. I earned this shit the right way. So if I need to take down another bona fide star, I will. Well, this is very, very interesting. LA Knight wants another bona fide star. I think you're looking at one of them that he hasn't faced before. Cody Rhodes is out here. Why, hello, Mr. Knight. I don't think we've ever been properly introduced. We have very different paths, and I respect you. I respect everything you've done with that championship. I personally view you as worthy. However, if you want someone else to add to your list of champions, why not the first? Because I just finished off Logan Paul at Elimination Chamber, which means that chapter of the rehabilitation of the American Nightmare is over. The next chapter, and the final chapter, is to get back to being a world champion. And if you're the one in the way, then I guess we have ourselves a match to make. Okay, now I get it, and I thank you for those kind words, but I think you're misinterpreting my statement. That wasn't a call out or an open challenge. It was just a statement. I want another star to come get stomped out by the mega star, but I want them to prove that they're a star. I mean, come on, you beat Logan Paul in what, your third attempt? No disrespect, I just think a number one contenders match is your next step. At least I don't have the same amount of gimmicks as years of my life. Hey, what was that? What's this under the breath stuff? Say it like a man. Look, I, I, look, I didn't mean for it to come out like that. I, 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 it was an honest mistake. I, I'm just kind of acting on impulse. Don't play politician with me. That's not how I play my game. You want to skip some lines? Peruse your way to the top? Guess what? It worked. I'll see you tonight. I'll put that title on the line. And you're going to wish you never opened your mouth in the first place because you're going to hear from the entire world telling you whose game it is with everybody saying L. A. Night. Yeah. Well, Cody Rhodes overstepped a little bit, a bit uncharacteristic from the American Nightmare, but I guess he got what he wanted. LA Knight will defend the World Heavyweight Championship against Cody in the main event. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a Money in the Bank qualifying match as we continue these triple threats and we decide all three women from the SmackDown side of the ladder match. As Becky Lynch, who I don't think retired, but I don't know, she represents the greater good trying to rebound from Seth Rollins' loss as she takes on first, Shayna Baszler, the baddest woman in WWE today. She had her issues in the Battle Royal last week with current Women's Intercontinental Champion Indy Hartwell, but hopefully she can focus tonight as she aims to make it to her first ladder match. As finally, they face Rhea Ripley. Mommy has been working with Dominic Mysterio in a way for the past couple weeks, it seems. Sort of infiltrating the Judgment Day, but kind of working with them. It's a big situation, but if she has recovered from that Elimination Chamber and up, she will have no problems jumping straight into a ladder match. Who qualifies for Money in the Bank? Now tonight we are in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm trying my best to incorporate uh, in locations. It's, it's, it's going well so far, but you'll see why I'm trying to incorporate them later in the video. You'll see, you'll see. But now we have a Money in the Bank qualifier only tonight is just women's qualifiers like th there's only three w qualifiers tonight and they're all for the women's side of the money in the bank or the, the smackdown side of the women's money in the bank and it's these three two former champions and Shayna Baszler who's competed for championships before one time against Rhea Ripley on pay-per-view if you remember King of
of the ring from last year, but Becky Lynch is now trying, she was the first ever champion, she's now trying to get back to that. Rhea Ripley was champion not too long ago, at least around this time last year, and now Shayna Baszler off the ropes, it looks like a suplex maneuver, but here we go, these big stomps, just trying to at least get some sort of championship, this is one step closer, but Rhea Ripley with a rip cord, and Becky Lynch taking her down with a shoulder block, uh, shoulder block, yeah, whatever, Shayna Baszler coming up from the floor, and now just wrenching at Becky, but um, Peep Rhea over there, what do you got with that? Oh no, and now to Becky across the head again to Shayna, she's going crazy on a double team in Becky right now, that's not for the greater good. But Lynch is able to fight out of it with these padded leg drops from the man. But no way, Shayna able to just, she just teamed up with Rhea and now she's not. But Becky is going to take quick advantage of it. Shayna sends Rhea over the rose, but Becky's got a chair now too. The other one broke, but now a disarmor. But right as Rhea Ripley got into the ring, drop kick breaks that one up. But Becky, manhandles slam. She's trying. She got out of that cover. Shayna's down and Rhea kicks out. Shayna was not near, the, the, not near close enough to break that up. And that could have been bad. But look at that, that boot right to the face. But Becky's able to bite out of it. Here we go. And now Shayna's in here. Wait a minute, guys. Step for the Karafuna clutch. She might be under the ropes. It doesn't matter. It's a triple threat. Rhea Ripley able to break it up, though. And now Shayna's going to do the exact same thing to Rhea. No, Rhea able to bite out of it. And now look at this. Becky from behind. Oh, just dropping Shayna down. Now Rhea. Good little right to the back. And now on the outside, they are just going crazy. Kendo stick throwing at her. Wait. That's... That's Roxanne Perez to the greater good! A pop rocks to Shayna! No! That's not supposed to happen! She's gonna help Becky! Wait, that's... Dirty Dominic is getting in the way of Roxanne getting in the ring to help Becky! In turn, helping Rhea Ripley, who's been doing for a while now! And look at this! Rip tied on Lynch! Shayna was taken out this! Backfired! And Rhea Ripley is able to get past the greater good and whatever shenanigans they wanted. And she has now qualified for the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. She joins Bailey and Dakota Kai from Raw. We'll find out everybody else from SmackDown tonight, but Mommy moves on. Hey champ! Congratulations, my man. If there was anybody I'd want to take that title off of me, it was you. I greatly appreciate that, but now the grind doesn't stop. I'm ready to take this title everywhere. I'm going to do an open challenge tonight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just because I congratulated you doesn't mean I don't want it back. You're not doing any of these open challenges. Until you give me my rematch, man. Come on now. The people loved it the first time. Let's run it back. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Let me chill and do what's right first. Hey, I'll cancel that open challenge and get this rematch going next week. Well, there you have it. Montez Ford will get his rematch for the United States Championship next week against new champion Wesley. Now it's time for yet another Money in the Bank qualifying match, and it's another women's qualifier, as here comes Cora Jade, who won the Battle Royal last week to qualify from the Elimination Chamber, entered the chamber, and got triple teamed by an alliance from Eosky, Kairi Sane, and one of her opponents. She was screwed again, but tonight she faces two opponents, first being Asuka, one of the women who ganged up on her to take her out of the match. The Empress of Tomorrow has been involved in so much since returning to the main roster, but hasn't yet got that championship win. Could she get one step closer as they take on Indy? Hartwell, a current champion, the Women's Intercontinental Champion. She's been proving people wrong left and right about her time as champion, but with many with their eye on her, can she be impressive enough to qualify? Let's get right. You see, I've had my chats with a lot of people that are avid viewers of this series. If you want to become one of those people, you can just join my Discord server. It's really easy to ask me questions about literally anything. But I've talked to a lot of people, had some conversations, and the topic of Cora J gets brought up, and people are just noticing how Every time she gets close to something major happening in her career, something happens. You know, that there was a gauntlet match a while back where she won it, but then they put through Becky and or something. I, I forget what it was. I should remember because I am the Booker man, but don't worry about that. But she was so close, but yet so far. And she was so close. She made it the Elimination Chamber in that Battle Royal, and then she got triple teamed. So Cora Jade is really focusing on trying to actually capitalize on something here but you know Asuka's in this match she was one of the three people that was ganging up on her and now she's trying to submit her Indy Hartwell's in here gonna break it up as a current women's intercontinental champion she has a lot to prove to people so she's gonna do her best as she can slice bread but may have hurt her knees on that chair really quick big spinning round kick from uh, Asuka there and now off the ropes of the Hurricane Rana and I oh my god oh no Asuka but wait Cora fighting out just runs DDT on the goddamn chair but Indy Hartwell back up to her feet and now Asuka able to take advantage of Indy and Cora attacking each other. Roundhouse kick to that goddamn 
stab Skull, but Indy's back in the ring to break up the pinfall. That's what I think eliminated at least somebody in the chamber. But Cora Jane catches her with that slice grab. Oh, I got a chair to Indy and a chair to Asuka right to her knees, right to her face. Oh, right to her knees again. That's crazy. Sent on on Indy Hartwell, but now Indy fighting out from the floor. Flapjack onto the broken chair. Kendo stick where she gets that from, but she's hitting both people. And now, oh my goodness, running forearm strike to Asuka from behind. But Cora's able to break up the pin. Cora trying to call up Asuka. But Asuka, here we go. These kicks right to the back of the knee, trying to soften her up a little bit. And now, look at this an Oscar lock an Oscar lock variation with the arm and Indy she's trying to break it up oh god a kick right to the face now oh my goodness Indy just breaking up something on the outside but Cora Jade and then Zaguri in the ring and now again double under hook DDT to Indy Hartwell but no Oscar oh no Oscar these combinations oh my goodness the Empress drops her but no wait Indy back up to her feet right as Oscar was trying it then a hammer lock DDT Oh god, her Kabuki warrior partner, Asuka was trying to get some help, but EO Sky, EO Sky is attacking the women's champion right now, she's the women's world champion, and now a, a Koji clutch on Kairi Sane on the outside, EO Sky did not like the breaking of the truce that they had in Elimination Chamber, the Kabuki warrior has been running rampant, and now EO Sky just took out the women's champion who was trying to help somebody in this match. So there's going to be no shenanigans. Hopefully, oh my god, look at Shayna Baszler. We just saw her lose her qualifier and she's been attacking Indy Hartwell before. Now she's doing it again. I think she clearly has her sights on that women's intercontinental championship. But why now? Couldn't you just ask for a title shot or something? And now she's taking her outside of the ring, making her a non-factor in this match. A Karafuna clutch locked in on the outside to Indy Hartwell. This is actually despicable. Another person been taken out by Asuka. Went for a kick. Cora went for an insecure. Big drop kick from Asuka. And now here we go. Calling her up for an Asuka lock. Cora is in precarious position. No way. Cora. Oh my goodness. Wait, wait, wait. Indy's down on the outside. And she's nowhere near a roll up here from Jade. Yes. She did it. Cora Jade qualifies for women's money in the bank by the skin of her teeth. It wouldn't happen if Kyrie came in. But now Cora joins Rhea Ripley, Dakota Kai, and Bailey. What a win for Cora Jade. You have to feel good for that. She finally has another chance at Destiny. All this, I'm just overwhelmed by these messages. I can't even get business done because they've made so many accounts I can't even find my own superstars. And you know what? I'm tired of hearing about it, so I'm going to do something about it myself. See, now it's happening to you. Okay, you know what? This person wants to be involved so much, you know how to shut them up? Get someone to do it for us. They're going to have a match next week. I'm doing it. Wait, no, no, no. How is that even possible? I'm going to make it possible. I guess this stalker has a match next week. This could go very wrong. Now get ready for the Yes Boys. After their debut on SmackDown a few weeks back, they have gotten themselves in a bit of a problem with another tag team and an almost friendship with Otis, but they did tell him no. So it's a bit upsetting, but tonight, Pretty Deadly take on the Creed Brothers. And ever since turning on Otis at WrestleMania, they have been detested, they've been disgusted, they have been trying to get up these tag ranks. I'm pretty sure Julius and Brutus are done with the trio's titles. They are focused on tag championships. They will be one step closer if they beat PD. Let's get it going. You know, it's hard to really decide. Okay, well, Pretty Deadly's already missed it. Elsa Prince, what are you doing? Oh my god, Creed Hardy dropping him. That's insane. But it's hard to really decipher what what happened to where the Creed brothers turned on Otis. Well, how did they how did they get this mindset all of a sudden? Because they were champions for 300 days, and the first time they even get close to losing, when they actually did lose, they were such great champions. They lose once, and all of a sudden the Creeds want to turn on, but wait a minute, Elton Prince, if there was a problem between the, 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 any time in their reign, you would have never guessed it. So the fact that the Creeds were just so eager to jump on Otis at WrestleMania, just there's something up with that, and I feel like there's something to be revealed soon, because they, they, they gotta explain something, because I don't know what happened. But oh my god, a double back body drop from Brutus and Julius. Brutus not make any food reviews on Twitter or on Instagram. It's actually on Instagram he does it, but no more stupid like engagement farming BS from Brutus Creed. And now straight business. Tagging in Julius Creed. Elson Prince has not got a chance to tag out, and Julius has already been in a second time an overhead belly to belly. And these the Creeds are just operating at a whole different level. They used to be in a group in NXT where they won the 
NXT Tag Team Championships. They were brought up and put with Otis. And now look at some Tag Team Champions right here. Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate of New Cats Republic are actually here watching the match. That's pretty neat of them. But Elton Prince is trying to fight out as best he can. Finally gets an opportunity to tag in Kit Wilson. And Elton still catching strays. But no wait. Backslide from Kit Wilson. And no, Julius is able to actually kick out of it. And they're staring each other down. Kit Wilson trying to use some power. But Creed with a belly-to-belly -belly overhead style. Dropping an elbow. But no wait. Kit Wilson trying his best to fight out of it. And now look at this. Right to the side of the head. Right to the ears. Trying to make that shit cauliflower. And now into the corner. No, he missed. And a German from Julius. And now White Kid's trying to fight out again. He's trying to defend pretty deadly. They've been they've had a change of heart in the right way, actually, recently. They seem like they said no to Otis, but like they're clearly standing up for something that is actually good, unlike what they did in NXT with the tag championships. But look at the power of Kit Wilson with the power slam now tagging. Elton Prince had a plentiful break. And now these two, yes boys, are gonna go. Tag team maneuver, some of the they're some of the best tag team maneuver people. They're most creative people that I've seen with that. A big boot right to the face of Brutus, trying to cover him, but no, Julius able to break it up. And now Julius not even legal man and clotheslines Prince over the top rope. Brutus takes out Kit. Oh no, big boy going up with a shoulder tackle to Prince. He's not even the legal man. Throw Kit in. No, Prince is a legal man. Kit just got thrown in for no reason. And now look at Brutus dropping him down, taking out Kit for no reason again. Up on the top rope to the outside with the Brutus ball. But wait, Prince back up to his feet. Brutus didn't see it coming. And now a, a double axe handle and new catch Republic liking what they see. And they're trying to get some new number one contenders here. They move past AOP. So now they're clearly looking to defend him again. They're fighting champions. And look at the creativity that I was talking about earlier. A big clothesline from Kit Wilson. And now again, no way. Brutus able to switch it over. These were collegiate wrestling amateur athletes. Could have went to the Olympics maybe. I don't know. But there's a topical so I wanted to talk about it. And now tag in to Julius Creed. And now, whoa, whoa. Ivy Nile. Wait a minute. She was called up with the Creed. We haven't really seen her much with them. But, oh, no. Oh, wait. Shit. That's, that's Maxine Dupree. Why is Maxine Dupree here? But she was moved over to SmackDown. We haven't seen her in years, it feels like. She just took out Ivy. Oh, Otis is here. You have to think Otis is here for Pretty Deadly, and it, it may pay off at this rate. Ivy Nile was taken out, and don't go crying over spilled milk. Cover. Elsa Prince, is, 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 they just took advantage real quick. And Pretty Deadly beat the Creed Brothers with the help of Maxine Dupree. And Otis, I didn't expect to see Maxine Dupree here tonight, but maybe Pretty Deadly could be next in line for those tag titles. You know, New Catch Republic watching on. That's big for the boys. And like I said, New Catch Republic, we're definitely watching on. Wait a minute, a headbutt and a goddamn forearm from the Judgment Day. Devil inside and south of heaven. The Judgment Day, Damian Priest and JD McDonough just took out New Catch Republic. Otis is still here. Oh my goodness, that's Big E. That's the fucking Big E from the damn New Day. The New Day terrorizing Otis again. A big ending. And now look at this, taking out Pretty Deadly. A trouble in paradise. And Woods drops him with a baggage driver. What are we doing? The New Day again just don't want consequences. Mello, what's up, man? There's not a goddamn chance you followed me to the grocery store. A man can't live. What you mean, Mello? It's me, R Trick. Truth. Your name is R Truth. Stop trying to be Trick Williams, dude. I don't like him, and now I don't like you. Oh, come on, man. I was just trying to tell you that I got you a Money in the Bank qualifier next week. I don't care what you. Wait. A Money in the Bank qualifier? You got me a Money in the Bank qualifier. Of course I did. Trick and Mellow Gang, I had to do it. Okay, stop doing that, but I'll let it slide right now. Guess I gotta go win Money in the Bank. Now it's time for our final Money in the Bank qualifier for this episode and for the women of SmackDown. There's only three spots and two have already been filled, so can Roxanne Perez do what her greater good partner Becky Lynch couldn't and qualify? Well, she'll have to go through another two opponents as she faces Raquel Rodriguez, a woman who used to be a bodyguard but ever since has been really trying to find herself, and this could be her best opportunity. But to get there, she'll still have to go through Alba Fire, former WWE Women's Champion, last year's Women's Money in the Bank winner, a member of the Judgment Day, although it's been rough recently. And even after competing in the Elimination Chamber, she is still here trying to do what Rhea Ripley did and qualify as well. Who snatches that final spot? Who's going to even out the field for SmackDown? Or kind of not even because it's going to be three or and five total. But you get what I'm saying. She's, they're going to round out the field for the SmackDown women. Raquel Rodriguez would be a powerhouse in that match. And she's displaying right now to Roxanne Perez. I was trying to take advantage, but no, Roxanne takes her over. Seeing her do a fireman's carry is just... 
so wrong on many levels, but it's okay. Rico Rodriguez taking down with Roxanne for no reason again. And now look at this right knees to the corner. And now it's us to but too, she was trying to get out. But Raquel, good lord, the power game from Big Mommy Cool is going crazy. And now she's just gut-wrenching. Uh, like, uh, she's stretching out with former champion right now with ease. And Raquel's just, oh, oh my god, but Roxanne Perez on the outside. We saw her make her presence earlier. Now she got a kendo stick, but we saw her get involved with Becky Lynch's match, taking out Shayna Baszler. But now Roxanne Perez is trying to get in on her own right. If she's able to get in and Becky wasn't, that's going to be a conversation. But, oh my god, a hurricane might have from Fire. If I, oh, to Alpha Fire. If Alpha can get, can't get in, but Rhea could, Dominic's going to have some easy pickings for who his new mommy is or something, because I don't know what's going on. Alba is going crazy with that forearm and super kick and now look at this a gory bomb to the prodigy but no wait raquel rodriguez oh my goodness throw him across the ring uh, throw her across the ring i meant throw um but it sounded like him but you know we're, we're, we're okay here charles no oh god what happened to you but a forearm big boot almost connected but raquel throwing alba down to the floor big shot though from alba big kick trying to tear down the powerhouse and now into the pool huh was that a fucking fireball cover? You gotta, how do you kick out of a fireball? I know her name is Alba Fire, but I didn't think she had like access to it. But up on the top rope, Swanton on the outside. No, Roxanne Perez was able to move. And now look at this, diving to the outside. She was using a kendo stick when she when Raquel rolled out, but that's crazy. Big gore buster, shout out to your gourd, I guess. And now Raquel dropping her with that power bomb. Now look at this, got her down. Oh no, Roxanne's in precarious position and I, oh, a corkscrew sent on from Raquel. And now look at this. Throwing her around with ease. That's insane. But throwing chairs is Roxy. Now look at this. Just throwing her whole body weight at her. But Jesus Lord, a double knees right to the face. And now Alba fighting out from the corner. And now these big combinations throwing Raquel. That's pretty impressive. Not in the art well impressive, but you know what I'm saying. And now Alba dropping Roxanne with that neck breaker, but a monkey flip. And now a spine buster. Spine on that pine on that chair shot. But Roxanne takes out Alba and now Raquel's up to her feet but immediate pop rocks Alba's down and Roxanne Perez is able to qualify the last woman to qualify for Smackdown and Becky Lynch didn't but Roxanne Perez is able to join Cora Jane Bailey Dakota Kai and Rhea Ripley we still need one more to be decided on Raw but Roxanne did it Becky Lynch is happy, you would think I would hope I can't really tell expressions right now but well at least one of the greater good got in Tama Tonga Please answer this. Why are you guys here? Family business. Okay, but what does that mean? I didn't call for you. And if I don't call for you, you don't show up. Doesn't matter. The elders sent us because they knew you needed help. I don't need help. You lost everything, Chief. Jay's gone. Jimmy's gone. Solo's gone. Heyman's gone. You needed something else. And we have been brought here to do just that. I don't care what elder sent you. I'm the head of the table and neither of you are allowed in the bloodline. Congratulations on the contracts, but stay out of my business. And before we get into this main event, I have a big announcement regarding the uh, locations of next week's Raw, NXT, and SmackDown. I brought in locations recently, and now we're going to take it a little bit up a notch. Next week, Raw and SmackDown will be taking place seaside because it's still the summer. Got to capitalize on this heat in the middle of August. So now both Raw and SmackDown will be in a seaside arena. There's a beach, there's a lifeguard, there's everything involved. But NXT isn't really going to do that. NXT is actually going to be headed to the Mall of America in minnesota there's an arena for that i just thought it'd be pretty cool to have next week's episodes be a little bit different than normally they're not tv specials but they're pretty big considering there's a location change and you know we got some big matches planned so be ready for those if it's a little bit different don't be surprised i warned you in advance thank you all and let's get to the main event now it's time for your main event, and that means the World Heavyweight Championship is on the line. After a heated exchange earlier, Cody Rhodes has gotten himself a world title shot in the main event of SmackDown. He said some uncharacteristic things, some disrespectful things towards our champion, which he said was on accident, but it doesn't stop the fact that the champ is pissed, so the American Nightmare has to challenge L.A. Knight for his damn championship. This could be a mistake by Knight acting on emotion, but if he never acted on emotion, he wouldn't be where he is today. He is trying to add another huge name to his list of victims on this reign, and Cody Rhodes would be a huge one to add. Who walks away the bigger man? Knight versus Rhodes put that world title to the sky. 
When we opened tonight, I had no intention on calling a World Heavyweight Championship match, but LA Knight is the champion. He can make his own matches sometimes when it matters. And now LA Knight and Cody Rhodes are squaring off. This is a pay-per-view main event, but we're getting it on the main event of SmackDown, a variation of a burning hammer. Not as extreme, but definitely effective. And now Cody Rhodes going to get up from the floor, though, and now into the corner. Big chop, big chop. And now Cody, he kind of used his impulsiveness and his aggressiveness that he can show sometimes he used it in his words and that's usually not from Cody Rose he can use it right now if he does a tope suicida and a side effect on the outside and now he's rolling through for that bionic elbow but usually he, he lets his actions do the talking in that sort of way in a disrespectful sort of way he did let something slip tonight I, I can only take it to face value I know who Cody Rhodes is he's not that kind of guy but you know sometimes if he's having a bad day LA Knight didn't like it and now I wouldn't like this either if I was LA Knight a stalling superplex but hey, Cody Rhodes, we all know who he is. It's it's fine. There's nothing to overreact about. LA Knight is, uh, is, is allowed to have his own opinion. He didn't think it was very right, so he's doing it. He's, he's getting it over with the settling like men. They didn't just straight up go like gossiping backstage. They're settling in the ring tonight. It'll be all fine and dandy tomorrow. And now Cody Rhodes, I think he's already bleeding, but yeah, 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 yeah. It's a Cody on that damn in the damn turnbuckles okay and now he's just taunting away as he has a knee straight onto the neck of cody rhodes but here we go he's trying to fight out former world champion technically two time if you want to count it but it's really the same reign but la knight la knight's been reigning for quite a long time now since survivor series so he's clearly got some uh, some experience at the top i don't know if he's even close to cody rhodes's reign in terms of numbers but uh, maybe he's I think he's got him in defenses. No, he doesn't but I, I was lying, but it's okay uh, But he might got him in days pretty soon He was trying to go for a pedigree, but uh, Cody uh, Cody got caught there with the clothesline And now LA Knight is taking full advantage of it off the middle rope of the bulldog But no way Cody fighting up from the floor able to sweep his leg and that was going for a, a, a mounted position But LA Knight is able to flip it with his own two forearm strikes and now Cody speaking of forearm strikes able to get him there went for a kick Turns him around big forearm strike to the head going for something here But no Cody's able to flip out of it now. He's got an electric chair dropping him behind him and now look at this kick to the guy, big kick like a gold dust. Okay, now look at this, got him from behind. Okay, it's sort of a bloody Sunday 1916 style thing. It went for Alabama Slam, but it looks like LA Knight's gonna reverse it into a power bomb. Okay, the mega star to the top. No, you don't do that very often, and that's why. Because Cody's able to move, kick to the guy, double underhook, pedigree, cover, and this could do it. Cody Rose trying to win it like this. No, LA Knight able to kick out. It's gonna take a lot more to take down LA Knight. We've seen what he's been able to go through. Went for a Moonsaw may have connected a little bit, but he was able to move. Went for a close line. Wait a minute! Crossroads! Crossroads out of nowhere! LA Knight's busted open! No! LA Knight able to kick out just barely. But uh, Cody trying to go back into the attack. He's been in these positions before. He knows you can't have any wasted motion. But it looks like LA Knight is not wasting any of his motion either. Got up to the top. Superplex. Wait. Taking it from the arsenal. The guy he just beat. Oh my goodness. He learned a couple things. Into the Falcon Arrow. No. Cody kicks out. Cody's dealt with that one before. He's had his problem with Seth Rollins too. Yeah, Megastar going off the ropes with an elbow drop. He's feeling himself in a wave kick to the gut. Missed. And now Duck Under maybe for the crossroads, but no. A close line. LNA's able to get out of it. BFT. Blunt force trauma on Cody Rhodes to retain. No. Cody's able to kick out. It takes a lot to take these two down. And LA Knight, just like Cody, he knows you can't waste any time. But he's going to send him out to the outside. Champion's advantage, of course, but he's going to go through with his own double leg drop. And now, look at the springboard. And no, went for a drop kick. But no, Cody able to take advantage. Final cut like his brother. Up on the top rope. Elbow. No, Knight moves into the corner. We go. He could have taken a counter if he really wanted to, but it's not going to work. Went for a drop kick off the middle rope. LA Knight able to dodge it. No way. He's going to get him up the back suplex. Didn't work. Got him. Crossroads. A second crossroads, Cody Rhodes, two time. It wouldn't be two time. It would just be a different championship that he's won. But he's able to actually kick out out of nowhere. I did not expect it. Kick to the gut. BFT, the second BFT. There's no way you do it again. Okay, Cody Rhodes kicks out. We're kicking out of multiple finishers on a SmackDown episode. This barely ever happens anymore. And Cody Rhodes is rolling him up here. Knights. No, oh, that was really close. Too close for comfort. And now he's climbing. Cody Cutter. Cody Cutter. And now maybe 
trying to go for something there, but LNI able here, got, got able to reverse it, roll up here. Oh, that could have done it, but no, Cody's able to kick out. Went for a close line, Sherman suplex. These two know each other so very well at this point. What else can you do to even get somebody off guard? Maybe like this, Cody trying to win a championship with a roll up would be insane, but no, kick out. Into the corner we go, Cody Rhodes went for a forearm, no LNI. Now he's going to send him into the other corner. Big uppercut, this one connects. Now no way, Cody fighting up with that kick from the floor, no way. Again, these two just going crazy, went for the boot, went for something there. Who's from behind? Maybe went for the crossroads, but BFT! Third BFT! Blind Force Trauma times three, and LA Knight retains! God damn! What a battle, what a war between probably the two top guys on this roster. LA Knight is able to actually come out with the victory, adding another huge name to the list of people he's retained this title against. If you are still disrespecting this man, you ain't watching the show. LA Knight is proving himself to be one of, if not the best world heavyweight champion of all time in this series. I know Gunther is like far ahead and away that guy, but LA Knight's definitely making a case. God damn, what an episode of SmackDown. Holy shit. Burn it down! Now I see what must be done. Sean, you have opened up my eyes. I tried to be a savior. I tried to be your savior. But people like you don't want to listen. People like you don't want to be saved. At Elimination Chamber, I tested you, but I never wanted to win. I wanted you to beat me, to open your eyes to see who you really are. But instead, you disparage my guidance in the middle of the ring. Now my motive has changed. You've made your bed, or better yet, made your casket. LA Knight, if that's who you believe you are, you will not be champion for much longer. You will soon succumb to the brightness, give in to the light. You know you will, because it's for the greater good.